Welcome to another episode of Jeff's Photo Tips. Today we're going to look at the Camp Slinger Stridomatic by Koi Speed. The way the Camp Slinger is meant to be worn is as a holster bag. And with the waist strap goes above your hips and this bit here lets the bag dangle down to just sit on your hip. It's actually a really, really comfortable bag and design and it, you don't even feel the weight on your hips or on your waist or anything like that. I recently used this bag on a five day hike, uh, just carrying two of the uh, Olympus Pro lenses and had the camera on the camera capture clip on my uh, chest shoulder area. Now, carrying mainly the Olympus 40 to 150 and the 7 to 14 2.8s in here. The bag was effortless to carry, even even though it was on me half the time. Also, being down by your side, I wasn't hitting it, it wasn't annoying me, and it was really quite comfortable. If we have a closer look at the buckle, it may look like your standard plastic buckle, but it's a little bit different. The side clips here that normally release it don't actually work on their own. It's got a little safety button here that you have to press and then it comes out. It's actually a really good feature. I've had some waist belts that you just accidentally bump them too hard and they'll come out. So when this is just sitting on your hips, you don't want to accidentally get knocked and unclipped. So the safety is a really good feature. Now moving around to how the belt adjusts. You've got a small Velcro with a scratchy side pad there and you've got a good 19 inches just under half a meter metric uh, Velcro strap there. So the bit which might be exposed is the soft Velcro so that's good attention to detail and you just have to adjust it to whichever length you like. Now it doesn't go off your hip size because it actually sits above your hips. It doesn't actually matter if it's a little bit loose because seeing that it hangs down to the side, the slack just gets taken up. Um, so you just sort of have to roughly put it to your waist size and you're good to go. Got a little elastic band here to act as a little stopper to stop the flap from flapping around as well. Short of that, it is padded on the back section and side section so it doesn't dig into you. Now around the back we've got a few little loops here which you could put any sort of bag or accessory system that wants to go for a loop. Uh, you could use the low pro uh, slip lock system which you put in the thing and velcro it up. Uh, what I was personally doing was hooking my hiking GPS through a carabiner just on the back and uh, that just sits out the back. I did note that you couldn't really put anything bulky on this section. You could get a drink bottle holder, and clip it on, that sort of thing works well for. Now another thing that Koi Speed sell themselves for these bags are little pouches. They have three different sizes. Uh, this one is the medium size and you can just thread it on to the strap and it'll give you room for an extra camera lens or a few accessories. Now while I'm on the subject of these little bags, it isn't a Velcro loop, but you could still put that just on your belt, fine. Velcro closure again, scratchy side on the flap so you won't scratch yourself on this part if it's not quite done up properly. You've got these gusseted um, sides so it keeps a bit of dust and showers out. Uh, the bag itself is meant to be shower proof, not waterproof, not rain proof, but shower proof. More about that shortly. Uh, but these little pouches are quite handy uh, for small lenses. That's the Olympus 45 and it sits in there with heaps of room. It's actually about the perfect fit for the uh, Panasonic 25mm 1.7 with the hood, uh, which I've done a review linked up here. Now the other thing that they claim it has is a little pouch here for an SD card. Now I've got one here to try. It is a very tight fit. 
The stitching on this one does sort of go in a little bit. I don't know if that's intentional. You can pop an SD card in there and at least on my sample, it's definitely not going to fall out. Back onto the main bag itself. We've got the entry clasp is this nice little metal buckle. Uh, it's really easy to open. I've actually scratched mine up a bit from uh, scrambling against rocks and copying a bit of a beating. That being said, the rest of the bag has stood up fine to the punishment I've given it. Now in the bag's defense, it is called a Streetomatic. I don't think they actually made this to factor in for people scrambling up and down mountains. They have actually started designing an adventurer's one though. Even though this is the Streetomatic version, the original version didn't look that suitable for bushwalking. It had Velcro side adjustments and didn't look very weather resistant. This one, as I mentioned before, is shower proof and actually comes with a simple rain jacket that wraps around it. Now, if I knew that there was an adventure one coming out, I probably would have held out for it. I might actually still consider it depending on the internal dimensions of it. Uh, but at the time that I ordered this, I wasn't aware of an adventure one and I'm still actually happy with this one. Uh, time will tell how much scuffed up I make the buckle and other aspects like that. But considering the punishment that I threw of this on a five day walk, it's held up pretty well. So to get into it, you press that buckle and it comes up. There's also a little pull tab there, uh, makes it quite easy to get. Once a bag's open, it's sitting on your hip. The idea is it's really easy just to reach in and grab your camera. Obviously this is easier if it's sitting on your hip and not on a uh, rather high table, but it is actually in practice really, really easy to grab. Now it isn't the deepest bags. I actually had problems with my AM1 and having the seven to 14 mil 2.8 lens on and this extra large eye cup. Uh, it was very, very hard to close the bag. It does have a little bit of give in the bag, but not a great deal. The other issue I had was with the 40 to 150 f 2.8 Olympus Pro lens it was a very, very snug fit. That being said, it did close. It was just a bit stretched on the lid and uh, was, a, was a bit of a squeeze to get the clamp done up. Now there is a bit of room in the bag to have one or two lenses along with your camera. Again, depends how big your lenses and camera are. More slimline cameras like my Panasonic GX8 or a Olympus Pen or some of the Fuji or Sony series would fit better in here without the hump on top like the Olympus. But there is room on the side for a couple small lenses. And it did come with several little Velcro dividers. And they went with little Velcro dividers, which you can stack them on top of each other to make a full height uh, compartment. But uh, it was an interesting choice rather than the bigger ones that you'd find in say a low pro bag. Much like the little bag, it also has gusseted sides that fold in to keep a little bit of rain and dirt out of the bag, which is a good addition. On the back side of it, you have a zip up pouch, which you could put, uh, well, anything in. Uh, it's also got a little stretchy pouch here, which I normally put a battery or two in. You could put a lens cleaning cloth or a lens pen or whatever you want that'll fit in that little pouch. On the front side, you have a little Velcroed up pouch, which I have been keeping the included rain jacket in, but it's sized so you could fit a mobile phone, which the S7 Edge sits out of it a little bit, but does fit. It would fit a small phone fine. On the subject of the included rain jacket, it does have a little Velcro rear closure, so it could fit one of the back straps fine. And at least with the black model, it is color matched to the bag. The rain cover itself is a pretty simple design. It's just got four seams and a bit of elastic to hold it on the bag. It fits over there really nicely, but I do have one complaint about it and it's from a hiker's perspective. 
The seams on the back of it aren't sealed, so if it got a heavy dousing of rain, water would seep through where the stitching is. This itself though is shower proof and the amount of water coming through these seams would be negligible. So it should still hold up okay, but if you're outside and it's absolutely torrential rain for a long amount of time, uh, it could get a bit wet. So that is a, something which would be nice to see. Admittedly, myself, I could run a bit of seam sealant over that and I probably will in the future. Now, the other accessory which came with it, and I don't know if it came with it standard, was a little thumb loop camera strap. Um, I haven't actually used it in the field. I thought it was a bit unnecessary. Maybe if you had a camera with a lesser grip. But the concept is you just put it on the camera strap point and it's just a simple bit of Velcro stitched to a little bit of nylon material. And when you reach into your bag, you actually put your finger through the loop and just pull it out really easily. Now, it's not uncomfortable. I just personally don't use camera straps that much anyway. And uh, I find it easy enough to put my hand in my camera bag and pull the camera out with its grip. But it was free. I guess some people might love it. They claim it's a brilliant camera strap. Uh, it is very discreet. So if you don't like big bulky straps and uh, have a habit of dropping stuff, which I may or may not, uh, it's, it's not a bad addition. Um, but to me, it's never going to make or break the sale. So that's my basic take on the uh, Koi Speed Streetomatic Cam Slinger. Uh, it's a good idea. Um, it's very comfortable. As I mentioned, I personally liked it for bushwalking. Uh, wedding photography, I actually went to use it for a wedding, but it doesn't look that great if you put it above your shirt. It fits very well below a shirt or t-shirt and hanging out from underneath it, but the belt itself looks really ugly if you've got a tucked in shirt. But if you're in any situation where you could have an untucked shirt or jacket and you wanted your stuff at a really easy to grab spot and you didn't have a lot of stuff on you, I actually highly recommend this bag. Uh, if you are somebody that needs 20 lenses and five flashes on you, of course, you're gonna know straight away glancing at this bag that it's not for you. Things that I'd personally change, I would like it a fraction bigger, not huge because it would defeat the purpose of the bag, but just probably another centimeter or an inch in both directions or all directions, even in depth, uh, probably only a centimeter in depth. I would like it in an actual waterproof fabric, much like how Peak Designs did with their Everyday Messenger bag, review linked up above here, or the Billingham Hadley, which I also have review linked up here, or bag actually pictured there. Uh, short of that though, I highly recommend it to anybody that thinks it's interesting. If you want it for hiking though, as I said, I have seen talk of an adventurer's model. Um, I have no idea how far off it is, but uh, that might be more applicable for you if you can hold out that long. Now I do have other alternatives for hiking bags, which I will be doing a video on shortly. So stay tuned for more content.